welcome to this episode for Electric Pages. Today we're here at Nuremberg Embedded World 2025 and it's been a fantastic event so far. Now today we are at the EP stand. I'm joined by Jeffrey. Thank you for having us today. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Now before we get into what's going on here, just tell the audience who you are, what you do and what you like to do in your free time. <laughs> so at EPs we are a semiconductor company focusing on extending the battery lifetime of devices and well ideally making sure that all customers never have to replace a battery or recharge a battery anymore. Fantastic. And what about your free time now? During my free time, I like thinking about what EVs could do next, to be honest. True engineer, working <laughs> all the time, no free time. I totally get that. So you're here at Embedded World and you've got lots of demos. Just tell us a quick overview of what it is that you're showing off today. So at this show, especially, we are showing off new demos in the smart home, smart building applications. We've had a lot of successes on the remote control market and the keyboard markets. We've got several demos here on the booth. And this year specifically, we'd like to show all the successes that we had on the smart home and, and smart uh, building uh, applications, going from different kinds of sensors like fire detectors, CO2 sensors, temperature humidity sensors, uh, but also some, uh, some uh, geolocation devices and retail cameras. So really moving from consumer market to more industrial uh, applications. So why have you made this decision to go from the consumer to the industrial market? What's kind of been like the driving force behind that? Well, actually, when we created EPs 10 years ago, we were absolutely convinced that industrial applications would drive energy harvesting seem quite obvious when you deploy sensors in the industry that nobody wants to go back there and replace the batteries of those sensors. But unfortunately, as everybody knows, COVID hit. And at that time, our industrial customers uh, basically closed their labs. And at the same time, we've seen the consumer market growing fast. So we decided to shift the business of EPs towards more consumer applications. But now that we've been there, obviously we want to stay there and serve our customers because we believe we can build beautiful products for consumers that will not need any battery maintenance, recharge or replacement. But now we'd like to go back to our first love, which is more industrial applications, where we can definitely reduce sensibly the TCO, the total cost of ownership of devices. And uh, that's why we are getting back there. Now, lowering power in a circuit requires a lot of different devices to sort of work together. So, microcontrollers, power controllers, maybe sensors and Wi-Fi devices and wireless systems. What semiconductor solutions are you actually developing that help to reduce power? Are we talking microcontrollers? Are we talking bridges? What is it exactly it is, exactly it is that you're making? So, EP is specialized in extremely low power semiconductors. So we've been working on different kinds of products, including extremely low power microcontrollers and extremely low power image sensors. But right now, what we are selling and what we are presenting at this show is energy harvesting dedicated power management circuits that are made to extract energy from different kinds of energy harvesters like PV cells, uh, thermoelectric generators, and use that energy to charge a storage element the battery of the device to basically make it work based on the energy that is available in, in the environment. And from the battery, we can also supply the application. So we have full portfolio of 18 different uh, PMICs that can be used to charge the battery and supply the application to help our customers extend the battery lifetime of their devices. So, so energy harvesting is a really interesting question and, and sort of topic because it, it, it's famous for its extremely low uh, I'd say well, low quality energy, so it's very hard to get energy from things like uh, small PV, uh, PV panels. But like this, thermoelectric generators are also very hard to extract power from. So what would you say has been the biggest challenge when it comes to extracting that kind of energy? What's the biggest hurdle we've faced? So <clears throat> the, the first thing is that I think technology has evolved very sensibly over the last years. Yep. So energy harvesting from 10 years ago is definitely not energy harvesting from today. Right. PV cell technologies have improved, yeah. uh, thermoelectric generators have improved, and obviously since EBS is on the market, uh, energy harvesting dedicated power management circuits have improved as well. And um, yeah, it is true that it is not easy to extract energy from a small PV cell, especially a single cell PV cell, for example, that generates a few hundreds of millivolts, 
or uh, thermoelectric generators with a small temperature gradient that will generate tens of millivolts. But when you've got the right electronic, uh, you can definitely do that. And um, you're saying that you can extract energy from thermal, thermal sources with voltages around the, the sort of 10, 20, 30 millivolt range. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I think the most difficult part is what we call the cold start. So when the battery is fully depleted, you need to be able to start the whole circuit from the energy available from the energy harvester, like the PV cell or the thermoelectric generators. Self-start the whole. You need to self-start everything. You need to build. You need yeah. to build up all the voltage nodes in the circuit, mm. from microwatts of power and tens or hundreds of millivolts of voltage. So that's definitely one of the challenges. But then, obviously, you need to find the maximum power point of your source, which is also a challenge. And you have to do all of that while you're trying to self-start with a tiny amount of power, and you've got to figure out well. It, We've got a tiny amount of power coming in. Now we've got to figure out where the maximum power is before it lo we lose that power. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And on top of that, you don't want your circuit to consume all the energy that is available. So you need to have a circuit that consumes nanoamps. Or, or circuits consume tens, hundreds of nanoamps, like 200 nanoamps, 300 nanoamps maybe. Because you don't want your circuit to be the main power consumption circuit no, you, on, no, on, on your device. So you need to be able to build all those functionalities, call start, maximum power point tracking, very efficient converter because when you've got microwatts of powers available, you don't want to waste all that energy. So you want to transfer 90, 95% of that energy to the battery. So yeah, indeed, you need to have very complex circuits that consumes very little power. And this is what we do. Fantastic. So of all the demonstrations that you're showing today, which one would you say is your favorite? I love them all. <laughs> I love them all, but I, I think the one that speaks most is this one, because you started this interview by saying you, you cannot get much energy from a PV cell indoor. Well, actually, this, this demonstration shows one of our latest uh, energy harvesting circuits that have a Coulomb counter built in. So that means in real time, through an I2C interface, you can get information about how much power is be being harvested from the PV cell and being Through charged. ICC. Yeah. So we've got the Coulomb counter in the circuit and the circuit can let know the main processor of your application, what is the exact power that is being harvested in real time. And what we show here is two small PV cells. Honestly, they're not that big. I can put my thumb there. The, the, the small one is under this light level, indoor, producing 40 microwatts. The other oh, one is oh, producing... Oh, are you combining two sources at the same time? Yeah, this one has two input sources. We can do, we can do two cells. So you could have one cell, one thermogenerator or something else. You can have two different energy sources that will always... Oh, that's Whatever brilliant. you want, yes. You can have an indoor panel and a not door panel, for example, to optimize uh, how you will extract power from the different sources that will both charge the same storage element. And then we've got a Coulomb counter to tell you how much power is actually being drawn, being used by your application. So you know if you are charging or discharging your storage element in real time. So if I increase the power consumption here, I can see that no, I'm consuming much more power and I'm actually discharging the battery. And then let's say I finish transmitting with the radio, I'm going back to a more uh, lo a lower power consumption, let's say, and I see that I'm charging the battery again. And the whole game of energy harvesting is, in average, to charge the battery more than you actually discharge I, it. I think I'd like to stress as well, that because this is a development size board, your, your, if you were to turn this into a practical design, it would be, I'd say, a, a, a sixth of the size of that thing. It would be a, a so much smaller. So this, yeah. this is doing a lot from two tiny little solar panels yep. and a tiny little chip. And yeah, I, I actually... All, all you need for it's your design is the cheap, the two main uh, inductors for the boost converters. You've got an inductor for the buck converter and three capacitors, and that's all you need. And you can extract energy from two different sources, supply your application, charge your battery. And then from there, we can turn that into a small little sub-circuit that then connects to my main microcontroller. And then the two can communicate knowing how much power is coming in, if it's charging, and how much power is left. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. So and I think one of the big prides of this year is that we've been able to collaborate with other semiconductor companies that are offering wireless communication capabilities. So we've got reference designs built in with Silicon Labs. Oh, really? 
we have another reference design with Corvo and we are currently wor working with Nordic on a third reference design. So loads of different reference designs. They're, that, they're all very famous companies who are famous yeah. for their low power applications. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And we hope that this will help reach more customers and convince more customers to move to energy harvesting and get rid of batteries. So just before we wrap this video up, I've got one more question for you. For the audience who are watching this video, they want to get involved with EV yes. solutions. What would you recommend that they do? They can come on our website, definitely, www.e-peas.com. There they can find all our products online. And if they, can, if they want to order it directly, they can go on Mauser. All our products are available on the uh, webpage of Mauser. And they can just order it and get started. Fantastic. And then if they need support, we've got a support uh, form on our website. And our field application engineers will get in touch within 24 hours to help you implement energy harvesting in your design. And I also believe there's a QR code right there. And there is a QR code right there, yes. <laughs> well, all I can say is thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.